So now we're back. We let this dry. Had a little bit of yellow, a little bit of burnt sienna, so you can still see some good movement to it. So now I'm going to add a little bit more color. I'm gonna add some blues, purples maybe to it. One thing to really remember is to experiment with your colors. If I'm gonna maybe use like an ultramarine, I might wanna just hover over it and see if that's what I like. I can try it out with a little bit of purple also and just kind of see what I like, the yellow and the burnt sienna next to these. I can also do that and actually put the yellow and burnt sienna right here to test that out. Don't forget, just because you have all these colors on your palette doesn't mean you're limited to this by any means. What if I want to make a little bit more of a greenish blue and do more of that sort of a color? So now as I'm going to start doing a little bit more of the unexpected color and developing more of the shadows and just more interest, I can either come into this with a dry paper and just start painting this in, but I want to make sure it's not too even. So the other thing I might want to do is now come back to some of this and get it damp. So that as I put this in, I can move that around a little bit and make sure that it's not going to be too uniform. So I'm going to mix a little bit of like a um, wet on wet with a dry brush effect. At this stage, I still like a little bit of a wet on wet approach because even if, you know, this is rounding, this is rounding. So even if this were to come up here, this blue, I like that effect up here. So I don't mind if it travels. At this point though, make sure that you're just dampening it slightly with a little bit of water. Do not drown your painting. So I'm gonna drop in a little bit of this blue and then we'll come back. Hopefully you're seeing how adding something like a blue to an ordinary brown beetle uh, just gives you that extra layer of interest and it adds a lot to it. So you can see how I left some a little bit liney and loose. It's giving me more depth. I have more of a 3D look going on and it's definitely making it a lot more interesting. So now I'm going to deepen up some of this and I'm going to show you how you can do that with either paint or with a little bit of pen but I have to let it dry first so we'll be back all right we're back this is dried now we're ready for the last couple of stages I'm going to show you two different things one I'm going to show you how you can add in a little bit of pen I have some really fine pens these are drying pens they are waterproof. I can do watercolor over them and I can also get really fine marks. As long as you have a Sharpie that is somewhat thin. So one of the Sharpie pens or it has to be the extra fine. The fine point, this is too thick. This or a Sharpie is really the best. If you choose to, you don't have to, but if you want to add a little bit of, re little bit of reinforcement with pen or pencil, towards the end you can. That does not mean you're gonna do a hard, hard outline at all. My edges are totally fine, they're defined. What I'm gonna do with the pen, I'm either going to use a hatch mark, which are parallel lines right next to each other that make shading. I can also use a stippling, which is a little bit of dots. I'm still barely touching the paper. This is just to add a little bit of depth so I plan to go over this with a little bit of a darker color, but I'm going to show you what it looks like if I add in a little bit of hatch mark. 
or a little bit of stippling. I can mix that in there. I can get a little bit of a deeper shadow going on. Now when you look back, you can see that that's a little bit of a deeper edge. If you happen to have drawing pens, this is an 01, the one I like best for details. We got an 005 is really, really thin line. So I can come in and do that a little bit even more. I can also use it, say, up here if I wanted to do a little bit of dot to get just a real hint of a shadow on these kind of edges where it goes in, actually. When we're talking about pen, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about just a little hint of pen, a little hint of pen, not on the edges. I'm not outlining. This is just to reinforce depth or details. I could also do it right here where, you know, the two kind of sides go. So when you look at it from far, you're not really noticing the pen. The pen is secondary. It's more about the watercolor. You can do the same thing with a pencil, but you need to finish the painting first, and then you can do that same hatch mark. But once again, you're not outlining your object. Now, I'm gonna add a little bit of a deeper color, deeper value. So now this is one thing I need to double check. What colors have I used so far? I started up with yellow, did some burnt sienna, and then I mixed ultramarine with a permanent green to get more of a greenish blue. So I want a darker color, but right now I'm kind of happy with the color scheme I have, and I don't really want to introduce anything too drastically different. So I could put purple in there, but purple is gonna just change the color scheme. This is the green I mixed with the ultramarine, and that's too bright right now. It's gonna grab too much attention. If I add a red, same thing. I'm bringing in a new color scheme. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix up a darker concentration of this blue, and then I mixed my cadmium red with my golden yellow, and I made an orangey color that's somewhat in the same vein as these. Because I used the yellow, the same yellow, even if I'm mixing in a red, that way the red kind of matches with the color palette that I already have going on. So that's one tip. If you're gonna introduce a new color, you can mix it with one of the colors you already used, and that gives you a little bit more color harmony. I'm gonna add a little bit more definition through a darker value, and then I'll come back. I added a little bit more definition with some darker value. So I'm going to touch that up a little bit, but I'm also going to use that orange now. It's not a dark value, but there's certain areas that maybe are a little flat that I'm going to try and add a little bit more interest, a little bit more movement through a little bit of a brighter orange.
So our beetle is pretty much done. There's a couple of things that I will need to even out since I did a little bit of pen here and here and nowhere else. So I'm gonna add a little bit of pen. If you look closely, the goals here. We took an object that was mostly brown to start with, this type of beetle, but by adding blue and by mixing and layering and making sure things were uneven, there's nowhere on here where there's just one flat area. Because even here, if the burnt sienna had gotten a little bit flat, so that's when I went over with a little bit of that orange. Right here, we got a little bit of movement. And in the arms and the legs, <laughs> the appendages, there's a lot of movement. So I would go back with a little bit of pen just to even it out since I have it here and nowhere else except for that area. So I would need to go through and even this out. If I was doing pencil, I can go through and do that hatch mark once again. It's real subtle. So there's a little bit of hatch mark there. I can do the same thing over here. If you don't have a good waterproof pen, that's totally fine. You can wait till it's dry and then go in with pencil. That little bit of pencil, you can barely see it. It's real subtle. That's kind of the whole point. You can go back with pencil or pen. And if there's like a crevice right here where there's like actually a break in the appendage, I'm just going to kind of do that if I want to do a little bit to make a little bit more structure to the arm. But notice I'm just adding a little bit of hatch mark here and there. I'm not going through and outlining it. That's from the watercolor. Okay, that's it. Finish up your own paintings and we'll see you later.